Hi, and welcome to a short review. Today I would like to talk a little bit about Dell Notebook, Dell Precision M6400. Some of you may be looking to buy some powerful desktop replacement or mobile workstation, whatever you call it. And M6400 seems to be quite a good candidate, especially now when we released already M6500, which is a bit more powerful, but much more expensive. So prices on M6400 went down, which is a good thing in my opinion. So the laptop I have and I own, it's my own laptop, which is M6400 Dell. And in my configuration I have 8 gigs of RAM, quad core, QX, 9300 CPU in it. Uh, video graphic card is uh, Quadro FX M3700. 1 gig of RAM. At that time when I bought it, it was like a top-notch configuration. And it has two more empty slots inside. If some of you are more familiar with uh, architecture of modern laptops, we have this uh, mini PCI Express cards inside. One goes for wireless, one can go for Bluetooth or something else, GPS card. Sometimes there are empty slots. So in this laptop there are four slots in total. One is occupied by the wireless card and three slots kind of free one of them right now has this wireless usb card which i'm not gonna use i cannot find any devices as i said to support it and i'm gonna replace it with bluetooth and i will be left with two more empty slots one of them i guess was designed for broadband access plus gps and now one is totally empty so it's nothing in it no wires connected just empty slot so i guess something like i Run core 64 gig SSD can go where because they have this tiny SSD 64 gigabytes, which is looks like a 50 millimeter mini PCI Express card, which can fit. So I can fit two of those, of course, if I need to. So far, I don't. Anyway, it's just good to know what potentially you can do some tricks with a configuration. Let's say you have your SSD drive just to boot up the system, and then the main HDD is just for the storage, I believe. So in terms of a hard drive, so this laptop can accommodate two hard drives, basically in RAID 1 or RAID 0 configuration. I have two 320 gigabyte drives in it, 7200 RPM in RAID 0 configuration. I would say it works very well, very quick, no complaints at all. So good things about the laptop, it's quite well built. I'm using it for a year already, nothing broke so far. Looks like new, pretty much. So it's quite good, very quick, very powerful laptop. Uh, about downsides, uh, one of them, you need to clean it. Clean it from dust. I mean, these grills over here. You're not gonna see any dust from the outside, but inside, between the fan, which is located right here, and these grills, which are quite white, and in both grills there is a cooling for a video card and in one of them for the CPU it is for on this side for the CPU as well so you won't see any dust from the outside but on the inside between the fan and the grill uh, the dust may be like just dancing and boring there because it's just too much of it may be collected there and the laptop will start overheating definitely. Another downside is screen. It's not really downside, it's something you have to deal with and get kind of more uh, information on it before you decide to buy this laptop. Uh, we come in two basically screen types. One I have right now installed on this laptop that's RGB LED screen, which is very good. I would say, if you know how to use it. The problem with it is a wide gamut screen and very, very badly calibrated from the factory. The problem with any wide gamut monitor, it basically displays oversaturated colors, especially in green area, because standard sRGB, which kind of Windows interface is designed for, has quite narrow gamut and wide gamut monitor extends red, blue and especially green. So when you buy this laptop with RGB LED screen, everything will look green, especially on the interface. So the actual gamma 
of the screen is not correct as well. So I'm not sure what lawyers were thinking when we actually build that, but it appeared to be like that. And you need a hardware calibration device to calibrate it, basically. So you need to go and buy it. Anyway, when the calibration is done correctly, you can use it. You must assign a profile to the color properties of Windows. So with programs like color managed applications like Photoshop uh, would actually be able, or Safari, the browser, would be able to actually recognize the color coordinates of your screen and would display the pictures on it. Uh, correctly. This screen it actually has the true 8 bit per pixel uh, digital to analog converter. That means that comparing to a standard screen of laptop like this, which has only 6 bits per pixel, this screen can actually display much more colors. Our laptops we use some different different methods and some other methods to reproduce kind of more than 256 sorry 262,000 colors, but that's still not true. So this one is better in this case. But as I said, you need to calibrate the screen and you need to assign a profile to the monitor as well, and then use color managed application after that, and you will be fine. Also, these laptops we come with CCFL screen, so RGB LED screen, new technology, CCFL old technology, coal cathode lamp. Here we go. This is an example of that screen. Actually, I, when I bought this laptop, this screen was on it, CCFL. And the main problem of it is probably the worst screen ever built for the laptop. So don't buy M6400 with CCFL screens. Even though high resolutions doesn't matter, don't buy them. Only RGB LED. And you need to have a calibration device to calibrate it. And you need to know how to calibrate it. You need to look up what is the color profiles, what is Adobe RGB, and what is D65 white point, what does it mean to adjust the color coordinates, and so on and so forth. This is what you need to do. And then you can buy and enjoy this beautiful machine, M6400. Here we go once again. Now some more things. First of all, power supply is huge. It's just huge. It's probably the biggest power supply for a laptop I ever saw myself. Now the problem with the power supply, even worse than the size, is this LED right here. It's actually blue. When you turn it on and you just insert this into the socket, power socket, it will start to light in blue. And it's so powerful, it's probably draining I don't know, half of us power supply resources, I'm joking. Anyway, it will illuminate your room at night. So you need to turn it upside down to kind of make it not shine or attach some black tape around that. I'm not sure what's wrong with those people actually. Why are we making all these blue LEDs everywhere? And they are so powerful, you don't see screen anymore. You just see those blue LEDs everywhere. And you can see it here. If you turn this laptop on, See all these blue lights? Right here, right here, everywhere. Blue lights. I'm gonna press caps lock, another blue light. The keyboard is all white actually, not so blue, but still kind of bluish. Everything just looks crazy. So much light, different colors. Keyboard illumination is still okay when you're working at night, but why you need to? Create all this HDD lamp, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth signs, all in blue, and so powerful. Why you cannot do just green? Green is much nicer. And just turn down the power so it would be barely visible. You don't need to kind of signal you what you have Wi-Fi enabled. You just need to know about it. That's it. So that's all I guess about this laptop. So as I said, laptop is very nice, very powerful, and it's really really worth it if you know how to use it. And that part comes to the calibration of the screen, which is a pain in the ass, but possible to do. So, I guess that's it for today. Good luck, have a great day. Bye.